My name is Chris Simry and I love dragons. Who doesn't love dragons? Problem is, I don't think they always get a fair shake in books. The first dragon I came across was in C.S. Lewis's book Voyage of the Dawn Treader, in which Eustace, a rather despicable boy, is turned into a dragon. Fantastic! By being turned into a dragon, actually, he learns the benefits of being human, which is an interesting take on dragons, and stops being a dragon shortly thereafter in the book. But after that taste, I wanted more. So many of us probably read Anne McCaffrey with her Dragons of Perm. Anne McCaffrey insisted she wrote science fiction, not fantasy, her dragons were actually an alien species on another planet who were then genetically modified by humans. People were impressed upon dragons at birth. The dragons chose their riders and were telepathically connected. When I was a teenager, I loved them. But now, looking back, the dragons don't really have much personality of their own on the whole. A few exceptions, Ruth perhaps, but mostly it's about the humans and not the dragons. If you love Pern, there is a more recent writer I'm going to show you on an iPad because she's only available online, dragonchoice.com, Dragon Choice, set on Pern, but better than Anne McCaffrey, if I may say so, because the dragons have their own personalities. can highly recommend it. It's very, very long, three novels, you'll be there forever. So set aside a good long time and maybe a good glass of wine or two. Another type of dragon we find by Naomi Novik in her series about Temeraire. In her novels, alternative history, dragons are real. They also choose their rider upon hatching. There's no telepathy. And the dragons are, in effect, like battleships in the sky with a full complement of crew, a captain, a first mate. When they're in battle, they even have a medical bay under their belly and netting. I kind of like that, a bit like a submarine flying around, in effect. And the dragons do have their own personality. In fact, we have point of view from them sometimes. So if you want more about dragons, where we get a dragon's point of view, I can recommend these. So drawing upon that, what about dragons in my own books? Well, I've written about dragons in my Penny White series, which starts with The Temptation of Dragons, continues with The Cult of Unicorns, and the third book is out now, The Marriage of Griffins. The dragon there is called Raven. He has a thing for Penny. He keeps turning up where she least expects it with innuendo, who makes it, which makes it quite clear he is interested in her romantically. He's not a shifter. He's a dragon. Some people have found that a bit ew. I think it makes it more interesting. And she does have a human love interest anyway called Peter, a very, very nice man who loves Doctor Who and whiskey like she does. But can he compete against a handsome green dragon who can give her flights across Earth and the parallel world of Floger? The series will let us know. If you want to read any of my Penny White books, you can get a free copy by going to my website, www.chrissimri.com and signing up for our email list, and then I'll send you a free ebook of your choice. The books are also available on Amazon in Kindle and paperback. Thank you.